Hello students, good afternoon. Uh, from today onwards, uh, we are uh, starting second QC syllabus. Hope uh, you all are uh, in uh, good health condition and uh, all are capable of uh, listening to us properly. These classes will we will continue till uh, government uh, lifts the ban. That is, uh, if it gives till uh, government permits us to go offline. Till uh, till then, we'll continue this uh, online class. Uh, dear students, this is very much crucial time where most of the students are almost they are uh, keeping away themselves from these studies. See what happens, you know. Uh, you are at home, you are in the comfort zone, thinking of going for war. Yudha comfort zone na gitu mana kaga dila. Battle cannot be won in comfort zone. So we will have to come out of the comfort zone. So on the mostly on the wara hat dewas mali, gila lockdown gila open art board, open art board ni for government permits uh, to go for offline classes. Definitely we will go for offline offline classes. But till then, what we we'll do is we we'll continue online classes. Okay. Uh, uh, in this um, class, what I would like to do is I would like to start the uh, solutions chapter of the second year. But before that, before that, see students. First year somehow you have completed. Somehow you have completed, and uh, you may not be happy with uh, the the way we have completed the first year syllabus. But even then, that was the best that we we were capable of doing it. That we have done it. But even then, our first year syllabus muksidur na pura. Don't worry. Whenever you feel doubt, no uh, doubts during your studies, you just come to us when the classes are open. You know, you come to us. We will definitely keep on proper definite uh, definite schedule for clearing up the doubts of few first year syllabus. Uh, don't uh, be under panic. Uh, we will definitely take care of even your uh, PUC first year topic. And I heard that some of the topics are not properly completed. Even you, you just don't worry, everything will be taken care of by us. Thing is, you just keep your health in good condition. Clear? Okay? okay, students. Now, you know, you have come to second part of uh, your uh, you know, uh, career. Where uh, one, one academic year is left out, after that you will be entering into professional courses, and this is most 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 crucial part of your uh, life. Life. After this, you will be just recognized as a professional, either MBBS or engineering or something else. But uh, whatever you put in this uh, academic year in the form of studies, only that will decide your fate. Clear students, therefore, take this academic year very seriously and uh, try to postpone all your you know light activities like you know, uh, say it may be game or visiting some places, all those you just postpone that for one academic year. You keep your health in good condition and just dedicate to us. We will dedicate to you people. Let us work together so that we will come out with a very good success. Clear. Okay. Uh, coming to the you know question paper pattern, most of the students though they may study hard, work hard, um, where they go wrong is they will gather so many material, that textbook, this textbook, that reference material, this reference material, that question paper, this question paper and nothing will be completely followed by them. They will not follow completely anyone. So instead of referring to many textbooks, what should be done is uh, one NCR textbook and one reference material. This regarding reference material, you don't worry. We will plan it when you come back, come over here. We will plan and we will go for that reference material. Or else, if you are capable of uh, purchasing the reference material, you go for uh, this uh, MDG publication reference material. Otherwise, you come over here. We will do it. Then this uh, NCR textbook appears to be very small, very small. But the textbook is written by 
very much experts expert teacher in their areas it's like you know uh, if you read one chapter even for 10 times the each time the chapter will appear as a new and most of the students do not know how to read the textbook and one more thing students uh, let the examination be anything be it jwe be it neat be it hmc be it aims be it even our karnataka cd or comet for every examination the only resource only material that the students must refer is ncert textbook therefore and moreover this uh, for the question paper setter there will be guide, there are guidelines rather there are guidelines that you a uh, question paper setter can set any sort of question but the condition is student should not find a necessity of referring to other material other than the textbook for getting the answer i repeat question paper setter can set any sort of question paper questions but the answer must be found in the ncert textbook only okay what does it mean ncert textbook is thoroughly it should be thoroughly read we should be thorough with the ncert textbook and most of the time you know people students do not know how to read the textbook see when everything is available in the ncert textbook means if we are thorough with each and every line of the textbook then let whatever may be the question paper the question uh, question come in the examination everything we will be able to answer it let the question paper set up be uh, set any questions in whatever manner but the thing is its answer will be in the ncert textbook only clear students therefore it is very much essential to know the art of learning how to read the ncert textbook clear students i'll tell you that uh, 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 meanwhile uh, we'll start the solution chapter during this discussion i'll let you know how to read the text clear students Uh, in our day to day activities we we'll come across two types of substances one is uh, pure another one is mixed mixed substance can also be regarded as impure so there are two types of substances there are two types of substances one is pure another one is mixed substances for example Say copper is there, then bronze is there, then brass, then say copper, oh, etc. Uh, information regarding this it is there in the textbook, but it is there in the introductory part. most of the students will hardly read the ncert uh, introductory part but some questions can be prepared out of the introductory part itself i'll let you know how well see students this is the solution chapter of ncert textbook i'll read this uh see this is the pure element that means pure element pure substance means the composition composition must be same here only copper is there uh if you mix copper with the little gold then we will get alloy of this alloy of copper then this alloy of copper cannot be regarded as pure it is not pure but it can be regarded as mixture so mixture means combination of one or more different types of substances pure means just one substance and uh, to take another example say 
Pure H2O stands for just H2O. It is just H2O. Nothing else. Then, uh, uh, how to differentiate between the pure H2O and the water that we use? So, so uh, the water that we use, whether it is pure water, look at this. We have learned in the 10th class that pure water, pure water is taste less. Odorless, right? Taste less, odorless, colorless, isn't it? Then its uh, electrical conductivity is almost equal to nil, or it's very much negligible. But the water that we use is just opposite of this. See, here, the water that we use is having taste. Uh, maybe uh, odor, maybe little, little odor. Say uh, bleached water will have some odor. Then uh, little color. For example, uh, during the rainy season, the water supplied by corporation will be a full of coloring. That color. Then the water that we use is having. Greater electrical conductivity. So electrical conductivity is very high. See here. Pure water is this. And the water that we use is this. Then question arises. How this water has got all these things? Well, this water will have all these properties which are opposite to its own properties. It is because of the presence of Dissolved substances. Dissolved substances. The substances can be regarded, can also be known as salts. Dissolved salts. For example, NaCl, KCl, KNO3, CaSO4, CaCl2, MgCO3, etc. So these are the salts present in water in a dissolved manner and those salts are responsible for such types of properties. Therefore, the water that we use is not pure. Yes, students? And one more thing is, if you use pure water, you cannot survive at all. That is a different story. Pure water, it is not life sustaining. This water, that is mixture of the water containing so many other salts. In it, it is life sustaining. We are not talking about the utility of the water, we are talking about the pure and impure substances. So, pure water is just H2O, and impure water is H2O plus some other salts. Yes, what else? Now, here uh, I'll tell you, uh, I'll let you know how to read the textbook. Here. In this, uh, see, I'll let you know how to read the textbook you know, and so that you can frame the questions. And uh, before proceeding further, see, so here. Uh, answering I question between these two, uh, which is more important, means CS students. If you answer the question, you will be able to understand only that question. That question. And if you try to question, if you try to question, then before questioning, you will have answer. I you can create the question. Therefore, learning by questioning is more important than answering the question. Therefore, in this class, I would like to I you know let you know how to read the 
textbook. Just one sentence is there. See here. Uh, the utility or importance in life of such substances depend on their composition. For example, we have you know, copper, bronze, brass, etc. See here. Brass is the mixture of brass is the mixture of copper and zinc and uh, bronze is the mixture of copper and tin. Then one more is there. This is known as German silver. Like the name of Well, uh, German silver is copper, zinc, and nickel. Okay. This one, this is pure, uh, this is mixture. Then, question is. How to read this particular sentence and remember it? See, students, we can create question on uh, this. Say, bronze is, we can ask question on composition of bronze. If only composition of bronze is asked, then it is the mixture of copper and tin. And if it is the question on what is the composition of brass, then it is the mixture of copper and zinc. And uh, look at this. The difference between these two. We can create a question on what is the difference between these two? Or uh, what is the common element present in these two? Or what is the different element present in these two? Or which is present and which is absent? See here first. Uh, the common element between these two is copper. Then this copper can be bronze. Copper can be bronze if it has what? Tin. And this copper can be brass. If it has got zinc, well, this is one question we can create. That is based on the composition. And look at this. What is the composition of German silver? So, one first question is of its composition. Now, what other question can be created here? Just look at this. Copper and zinc and copper and zinc. So, there is a common property, common composition between these two. And there is no common between these two. Okay, now what is the difference? What is the different element? Uh, that is, what is the other element that is added to brass makes general, uh, German silver? That is answer is this. That means which element? Which element is added to? Which is that which added to? That is brass. Which added to brass that makes it German silver. This question can be asked. Or else, the other question can be see as well. How to convert German silver into brass? How will you do it? How will you do it? Remove, remove nickel. If you remove nickel out of German silver, then German silver, silver will become brass. Clear? So, just in the NCRT textbook, in the introductory part, this one sentence is there. Out of one sentence, you just look at this, how many questions can be created. So, while you know, while preparing the notes, these must be the points that you have to draw or that you have to write in the your notebook. In. And there is one more question that's very much important. Here. See as well. One is this, another one is. The second sentence here is where the uh, where we can create question is this one part per million. See, students, this will answer in due course of uh, discussion in the next part of the discussion. This is parts per million. 
this is one of the unit of expressing the strength of the solution. We will deal with this in due course of time. See, one ppm of of fluoride ion, one ppm of fluoride ion will one part one ppm of fluoride ion in water in water prevents. Prevents tooth decay. See, sir, one ppm of fluoride ion present in water prevents tooth decay. Okay. Whereas, if it is one point five ppm instead of one ppm. If it is 1.5 ppm, then what happens? Uh, there is one word. Tooth will become mottled. See, as well. what is this mottled? Mottled means patches of. Different color. That is not different color. A once a hello, the Bartonella, Halina, Banabato. That's what is modeling. Say, students, uh, uh, if one ppm fluoride ion is there in the water, that prevents tooth decay. It means this fluoride ion is acting as. Medicine. Next, instead of 1 ppm, if the water has 1.5 ppm of fluoride ion, then it is troubling. That means color of the teeth is changing. It means it is not acting as medicine. Is a clear students? It means that same ion can become medicine. And the same ion can become, cannot become medicine. It may be a problematic one. That question arises. We can create question on this, isn't it? Okay. Question is this: At what concentration of fluoride ion in water creates problem for the teeth? It is how much? That is 1.5 ppm. That will be the answer. Then what is bottling? Even that can be asked. Then uh, mottling is due to what is this? Mottling is due to the presence of excess of fluoride ion. Instead of uh, one point five, we can say that it is excessive. Yes, students. Like this, see uh, from another sentence of the textbook, we can create another two questions. If uh, one one ppm or less than one ppm fluoride ion is present in water, then that is like this. Medicine for two because it avoids tooth decay. And if uh, concentration of fluoride becomes more than 1.5 ppm, 1.1 ppm, then what happens? Tooth will be decayed. Even this question can be asked in the exam. Uh, like uh, uh, which concentration of fluoride ion in water prevents tooth decay? Or else they can say, instead of uh, saying tooth decay, they may say which may act as a medicine for teeth. Or we can create a question like this. At which of the following concentration of fluoride ion in water creates problem for tooth? See, such questions can be created. Okay. Uh, then another example is how this you know, see here. Sodium fluoride. See, so fluoride spelling is FLUO. Some students will write it as FLORID, fluoride. It's not fluoride, it's fluoride. Sodium fluoride, NAF, is used in a rat poisoning. Okay, based on this also, we can create one question. Say which of the following compound will act as rat poisoning? See, students, just out of one paragraph, that is half a paragraph, we have so many questions. Possibility of having so many questions in it. Therefore, reading of the NCRT textbook 
the way we read the NCERT textbook is it matters a lot. Therefore, whenever you find time, go through the NCERT textbook very comfortably. Otherwise, it is difficult. Okay, one more thing is okay, there are so many things here. Uh, you just go through the textbook, you will be able to find the you know, situations where you can create the question. Therefore, what I would like to tell you is this NCRT textbook appears to be small in volume, but it has got very huge information packed in it. Therefore, you, uh, you cannot read this NCRT textbook as other normal textbooks. Therefore, while reading this NCRT textbook, one should take care that this NCRT textbook should be read not from answering point of view, but from creating questions point of view. Therefore, each and every sentence should be read as if you are creating a question. Each and every time, each, after each and every sentence, you put question mark. What, how, why, then only you will be able to answer it. Okay. In this area, that is in this chapter, we will be discussing the meaning of solution or uh, formation of solution that is in this chapter we will make its meaning meaning of solution then say sometimes its formation then uh, units of expression of different components systems components means other substances other substances present then some properties properties these properties are called as cognitive properties okay what is what are all these are Something we shall see during the discussion. Okay. Let us begin with meaning of the solution. Okay. I said whenever you refer to the NCRT textbook, you read this NCRT textbook only from questioning point of view rather than answering point of view. Okay. Let us look at the meaning of solution. See so solution is the mixture, mixture of two or more components. But the thing is, this mixture upon mixing two or more components, we should not be able to distinguish between the components. For example, when NaCl, that is, it, is, it can also be called as table salt, or it can also be called as rock salt. When you look at this, can you create one question here? Which of the following is rock salt? Then they will give some other example in addition to this, say KCl, KNO3, like that. So, rock salt is NaCl, remember it. When NaCl is added to water, then upon shaking her only, then what will notice? Salt solution will get. Well, this salt solution will have both NaCl as well as water. But the thing is, with our bare eyes, we will not be able to find out where is water and where is salt. Clear students? Everything will be appear, everything appears as it is. Just water. Then how will you find out whether it has got salt in it or not? By test of tasting. Isn't it? Then, same is the case with CA students. Sugar, table sugar. It is table salt and table sugar. Table sugar is what is a table sugar? Sucrose is table sugar. And the glucose is another sugar. What is the form of uh, sucrose? It is C12 H22 pollen. Glucose is C6 H12 O6. Okay. 
uh, between these two, which is first clear and which will be given to the patients? Say so. Equilibrity formula, molecular formula of these two, it appears as a this is half of this. Isn't it? This is C12, this is C6, H22, H12, HO11, O6. That means approximately this is half of this. So we may expect that this should be more costlier than this. But it is not like that. You just go to market and uh, uh, ask glucon C packet. 50 gram will cost you more than 50 rupees. 50 gram will cost you more than 50 rupees. Whereas out of 50 rupees, you will get 1 kg. 1 kg sugar. Level. And then why it is like that? So if its molecular mass or the formula is double the time of the glucose, why it is more costlier than this? Because this is given to the patients. Even this can also be given to the patients. But the problem is, patient needs energy instantly. Okay, this undergo decomposition instantly. Therefore, releases energy instantly. Whereas, if you take this, then it will be divided into this. It will be converted into this. So, sucrose is converted into glucose and fructose. Then, that will release energy. It means that sucrose will release energy at later stage. It will take more time to release energy. Whereas, patient needs energy very quickly. And hence, glucose is administered or given to the patient cell because glucose gives energy instantly and that is why glucose is more costlier than sucrose and table sugar is this okay when sucrose is added to water then we notice a, instead of sour solution we get sugar solution okay sugar solution also appears as in this water that means upon uh, dissolving some small quantity of sugar into more quantity of water, upon setting thoroughly, what we notice is sugar dissolves completely. Then the solution of is called as sugar solution. Then how will you identify? Just like a test of tasting. So it appears sweet, it appears salt. Just to look at the taste, we will identify whether it is salt solution or sugar solution. But the condition is we are talking about this mixture world you know. here this we call it as solution because we cannot distinguish between salt and water here we call it as solution because we cannot distinguish between sugar and water so what is this distinction uh, distinction, uh, distinction means one of these substances will lose its physical state then one substance will retain its physical state. That means when two substances are mixed up, one substance, one substance, say out of two substances, one substance loses its physical state, whereas another substance retains its physical state. Then what is that physical state? Physical state means whether it is substance, whether the substance is solid or liquid or gas. Okay, we are dealing with here, one is solid and another one is liquid. Then the solution of hand is liquid. Then which is losing the physical state? This one. Here it means, you just remember this. That solution is mixture of two or more substances. We have taken here two substances. Then one of the substances will lose its physical state. Another one will retain its physical state. Remember this. Because of this property, that is, one of the substances losing its physical state, because of this property, this mixture, this mixture will become indistinguishable. That we call it as homogeneous. See, students, here. the spelling written is homogeneous, and it should be pronounced as 
homogeneous placements. Now, when two substances are mixed, they it is forming homogeneous system. Therefore, for a solution of uh, for a for a mixture of two or more substances to be a solution, for a mixture of two or more substances to be a solution, the necessary condition is it should be what is this? It should be homogeneous. That means a homogeneous substance, homogeneous mixture of two or more substances is known as solution. That means substance one, substance two, if both are mixed, then it may form homogeneous or it may not form homogeneous. If it forms homogeneous, then we call it as solution. If it does not form homogeneous, then what we call it as? We call it as? We call it as just mixture. Then what is the difference between solution and mixture? See students. Components of the solution cannot be separated. Cannot be separated just by physical means. Whereas components of the mixture can be separated just by hands, just by hands. That means com components of the mixture can be separated, whereas component of the solution cannot be separated. <coughs> that means for a substance, for a mixture of two or more substances to be a solution, the necessary condition is that should form homogeneous. And uh, being homogeneous stands for we cannot separate the components. Yes, what else? Okay. And we can create question of this. What is the difference between mixture and the solution? And uh, one more question is what can be the condition? What should be the condition for a mixture of two or more substances to behave as solution? What is the condition? It should be homogeneous. Yes, what else? And uh, one more further thing is this. Yes, what else? When NaCl is added to water, then what we notice is what we notice is we have got salt solution. Okay, now let us take this discussion further. Okay, so let's look at this. In one container, in one container, we take uh, Salt, or else we do like this. In one container, we take uh, this much of water and add one teaspoon of NaCl. What have we done? We have taken a container, having some water in it, and we have added one spoon of salt in it. Then what we do is we stir it. Upon stirring, what we notice? It will become salt solution. Is that? Is that? It will become salt solution. Okay. Then this substance, before adding into water, it was solid. This was liquid, isn't it? But upon forming this salt solution. This NaCl instead of uh, solid, it has become NaCl solution. Means solid has changed into liquid. When in liquid form, it exists as Na plus equals iCl minus equals. That means they exist as free ions. Look at this. Always. When we add salt into water, Upon stirring, it disappears. Disappearing doesn't mean salt will not be there. Salt will be there, but we will not be able to see. Okay. Why we will not be able to see salt without any water? By their eyes. It means 
and it is because the solid got dissociated into ions solid we can see but ions cannot we cannot see then question arises which substances we are capable of seeing it see students any substance which is capable of scattering the incident light or reflecting the incident light and the reflected light falls into this what is that b i b g y o r what is it 400 to 700 nanometer range this is called as visual uh, the range is called as visible range visible range if this scattered light or reflected light falls into this range of visible spectrum only then we will be able to see whereas see here ions are so small that they may scatter the incident right but the scattered light will not be belong into this particular area and hence we cannot see it therefore and the same as with the case with air air molecules are there but we are not able to see because they may scatter the incident light but the scattered frequency will not be observed clear students okay the solid loses its physical state to liquid okay students now let us repeat this by doing by reversing this experiment we are taking little salt there now what we do is we repeat the same experiment by taking this much of salt this much of salt and we add one teaspoon of water see here students here what we have done we have taken more quantity of water then what we have done here we add one teaspoon of salt to it and still and here exactly reverse of that we are doing here here we have taken salt more quantity and the water little quantity upon adding one spoon of water into large quantity of salt now what happens uh this water is appears water disappears <coughs> here salt disappear here water will disappear it means that water will lose its physical state it means that water will not become solid as sodium chloride has become liquid water will not become solid water will disappear water will get into the void water will get into the void the order of voids voids are the gaps in gaps between the two molecules two particles of the solid then water will disappear it means water will lose its physical state here sodium chloride has lost its physical state this is what as what is this if you call it as salt solution then what is this this also known as salt solution only but we cannot call it as salt solution we can and even we cannot call it as water solution also we cannot call it as water solution because it's a, it simply appears as it is just salt but it's a mixture of two components okay so let me let me summarize watch it very carefully i am going to define two more two more uh, terms here in the first case in the first experiment what we have done more quantity of water is taken and less quantity of salt is taken due to this salt loses its physical state in the second experiment what we have done is we have taken large quantity of salt and little quantity of water here water disappeared okay. now here the physical state retained is by water physical state this is retained retained by water and physical state lost by nsl remember this and in this case in this case physical state is retained by nsl whereas physical state is lost by what what now look at this but they will form homozygous it is also homozygous the 
that means both are solutions only. Okay. One substance, one substance of the picture losing its physical state, another one retains it. Okay, students. Just look at this. The substance which loses its physical state is known as solute. This is the next different term. And the substance which retains its physical state is known as solvent. I repeat, in the mixture of two substances, the substance which loses its physical state is known as solute. And the substance which retains its physical state is known as solvent. It means, in this case, sodium chloride loses its physical state. Therefore, it is known as solute. And water retains its physical state. Therefore, it is known as solvent. Yes, students. In this case, sodium chloride will act as solute and the water will act as solvent. In the next case, what happens? It is just reversed. You know? Salt retains its physical state. Therefore, NaCl is solvent. Whereas, water loses its physical state. Therefore, it is Solute. Then question arises. If, if the question is this, between solute and uh, between sodium chloride and water, the question is this: between sodium chloride and water, which is solvent, then most of the time, most of the students will answer, water is solvent. But look at this: whether the substance will act as a solvent or solute, that depends upon its ability to retain or lose the physical state. In the mixture of two or more substances, the substances which will lose their physical state, all are solutes. And the substances which will retain their physical state, all are solvents. Okay, one thumb rule, thumb rule, approximately. Thumb rule is this. In a mixture of two or more substances, which form a homogeneous system, the substance which is present in large quantity, the substance which is present in large quantity, is known as is known as solvent, and the substance which is present in small quantity is known as solute. Got it? Say, students. A thumb rule is that is. A convention is in a mixture of two or more substances which is forming a homo homogeneous system, solvent is the substance which is present in large quantity, solute is the substance that is present in small quantity. This is a thumb rule. That means solvent plus solution. That means solute and solvent. Is equal to what is this? Is equal to is equal to solution. Condition for this is it should be homogeneous, and hence the definition of solution will be a homogeneous mixture of solute and solvent. Clear? A homogeneous mixture of solute and solvent is known as solution. Okay, so many questions we can create so this here. Then we look at uh, possibilities of uh, different solutions. Possibilities of different solutions depends on the type of solute and solvent. That is physical state of solute and solvent. Say for example, say so here. Uh, the toothpaste or wood polish. We can take many, many other examples here. Now, both are what is this? Both are same solid. The paste, the very word paste itself is same solid. 
when the system becomes semi-solid, oh, before that, Manai Lau or Roti Chapati Martin Dora, Adam Mada, Hitima, Nate Hakro, and Nirna Hitato. No, Yellow Mada. Suppose Nirina can have a hit hacker. Enough of them, Nirina hit hacker. Andre, Nir Jasti, hit Kadim, Enough of them, Ambulia, Mamli, Genji. Suppose Ulta Madame, Hitina near Hakan, other hit just near Kadim, Avana, Buddha, Adolino, or Tera would be the Chapati. Therefore, that is what is D O U G H. Now, it means powder is in large quantity and water is in small quantity. What will form more than a system, which is solid, which is solid here, water. Water will be solid. And the solid will be solid. That is powder. Uh, in this case, gum is nothing but paste only. Uh, in this case, in the toothpaste, the tooth powder will be the powder part. Powder part will be what is this? Solid. solid. Uh, it will should be swallowed and the liquid part will be solid. Same as the case with good polish also. So we can have so many such examples which will appear in our day-to-day -day activities. <coughs> like that, see here, based on the physical state of the solute and the solvent, we can have different types of solutions. Let's see that. This one. Uh, we will maintain. Uh, we will maintain. Uh, create our table. Here. Say solute, solvent. Then the example of solution. <coughs> okay, uh, we take solute as solid. If you take solute as solid, then solvent can be either say solid or it can be liquid or it can be gas. We take examples there by referring to the textbook. Then solute can be instead of solid, it can be liquid. Then Solvent can be once again, it can be solid or it can be liquid or it can be gas. Then solid liquid. That solute can be instead of solid and liquid, it can be even gas. And if solute is gas, solvent can be once again, it can be either solid or it can be liquid or it can be gas. So total how many solutions are getting? Total how many solutions? How many solutions are we getting? Solid and solid. So one, two, three. Liquid. Liquid, liquid. Four, five, six. Gas. Gas and gas. That is seven, eight, and nine. So your total solutions are nine solutions are possible. Total nine solutions are possible. Remember this. It should be solution for a substance for a mixture to be solution, it should be conditioning homogeneous. Uh, let me tell you one situation. We will take one jump here. Uh, then you know one situation will come in this chapter of the that is colloid. The very difference between the very difference between 
Solution under the colloid is this. Solution is homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Whereas colloid is, it is a heterogeneous mixture of two or more substances. That means for a mixture of two or more substances, it should, if it is to be a colloid, first primary condition is it should be heterogeneous. The main difference between colloid and solution is this. Colloid is heterogeneous and uh, solution is homogeneous. And if that is the case, as we notice that there are nine solutions are possible and how many collides are possible? Look at this. This uh, gas and gas, and the gases will be any other, any gases, mixture of gases, see students here, mixture of gases will be always will be always homogeneous. So remember this. Will be always homogeneous. And hence gas, gas, colloid is not possible. Details of this we will see in due course of time. But for this moment, it is worth to differentiate between a colloid and the solution. See students. Mixture of gases will be homogeneous always and hence Gas, gas, colloid is not possible. If that is the case, nine solutions when it's possible, how many collides are possible? Eight. That means remember this. Just remember this. Nine solutions and eight collides are possible. Three solutions here. Meaning of collide, we will see during the discussion in the next classes. Okay, so this. Uh, all these, if they are homogeneous, then only we call it as solution. Let us look at the examples of the textbook where we can create questions. This is the most neglected part of the topic. Most of the students will neglect this. Here. See here, on page number 34 of this chapter, uh, we'll have we have this particular table. Uh, we'll have say gaseous solutions. See, it started with here, gases. That means if the gas, 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 if this is the gas, if this is the case, then example is, say we can take it as A. It is mixture of gases. Uh, try to answer this question. What is the molecular form of air? Or why air cannot have molecular form? See. Uh, air cannot have molecular formula, we cannot define the molecular formula of air because it is not the one compound. Molecular formula is possible for one compound. But air is mixture of gases. Therefore, air cannot have molecular formula. Therefore, air can be a solution of gas in gas. Or we can call it as the mixture of oxygen and nitrogen. Mixture of oxygen and nitrogen can be gas in gas solution then liquid in gas that is liquid in gas liquid in gas is this one. liquid in gas this is the solution liquid in gas uh, here chloroform in nitrogen gas so chloroform in nitrogen gas is Liquid in gas, <coughs> then solid in gas, that is solid in gas example is camper, camper under camper, camper in nitrogen gas. This is an example of solid in gas. Next, gas in liquid, gas in liquid. This example. Example for this is O2 dissolved in uh, water. O2 dissolved in water. Can we take carbonate in water or CO2 in water? This is the composition of cold drink. Okay, then liquid in liquid. Liquid in liquid. Example for this is. Ethanol, 
dissolving water. See, so you may not mention only these examples. If you know other examples, also you can mention. Then solid in liquid. Solid in liquid. This example is say we are taking so many examples here. NaCl in water or sugar in water. You can take any other examples. Then gas in solid. <coughs> gas in solid. This example. Example for this category is solution of hydrogen in palladium solution of hydrogen in palladium is the example for what is this gas dissolved in solid then liquid in solid that is liquid in solid example for this is amalgam amalgam satsam mixture amalgam of mercury with sodium it's also called as sodium amalgam <coughs> the solid in solid example for the solid in solid solution is see students we can consider it as alloy or copper dissolved in gold Okay. These are the information available in the textbook for uh, different solutions. Okay. okay. This table is most, most, most neglected part of the chapter. But look at this. We can create question on this. How many questions? At least ten questions we can create. Okay. The question is this. Amalgam is an example for which type of solution? This is the question. Okay. In amalgam, like you know, in uh, sodium amalgam, sodium amalgam, sodium amalgam stands for sodium in amalgam, mercury, sodium in mercury, or mercury in sodium. That depends on quantity of metal that we take. Yes, friends? Okay. Suppose mercury is dissolved in sodium, then Mercury is dissolved in sodium. Then mercury is solute. Sodium is solvent. If sodium is dissolved in mercury, then sodium will be solute. Mercury will be solvent. Is that clear, students? Okay. Question is like this: uh, In sodium amalgam, which is solute and which is solvent, or what is the composition of sodium amalgam? Like that. That question can be created. Then example for liquid in liquid example for solid solid solution example for gas in solid solution like that see by giving these two we can ask the question uh, example or by giving the question uh, example itself we can ask the components for example this is called as see students this is called as carbonated water see question is this what is the composition of carbonated water? If that is the question, CO2 and H2O is the composition. About here, little bit extra. This will give you H2CO3. That is carbonic acid. Car what is the composition of carbonated water? That is carbon dioxide in water. Or we can call it as even carbonated, uh, carbonic acid. Carbonic this is Carbonic. And there is another similar term, carbonic systems. If I pronounce it as carbonic, you may listen to it as carbolic also. But both are different. Carbonic acid is H2O3. Carbonic acid is phenol. Phenol is? Benzetrin and oil. See, word is carbolic and carbonic. Clear students? It is not carbonic, it is carbonic. Okay. Uh, 
example for gas in liquid this is the example solution okay composition of carbonic acid is co2 h2 isn't it and instead of calling it as carbonated water we can call it as what is that chemist name we can call it as cold drink how many brands are so many brands are Okay. Cold drink main composition is this CO2 dissolving H2O. Well, this is the situation where I can share this information with you. Look at this, students. This is capable of dissolving bonds. Cold drink is just not CO2 and H2O. In addition to that, it has phosphoric acid, etc., etc. That composition is capable of dissolving our bonds. Therefore, tooth decay is possible. I mean, on the bottle, what we notice is on the bottle of cold drink, what we notice is here or here, there is one node to be mentioned. That one is no calories. It means that upon drinking that content that is cold drink, you will not get any energy. Then question arises: What for you drink it? It's just wasted. You are damaging your system health. Okay. If it is no calories, then what for you are drinking? You do not know. And moreover, one more thing is the most dangerous thing is this. This one is pH. Remind all of you. pH. Of most of the cold drinks is nearly three or below three, and we know that if pH is less than seven, it is acidic. If pH is more than seven, we will notice it. We call it as alkaline or basic. Okay, pH is this much. That is acidic. It is highly acidic. See, here, cold drink is acidic. Will not give any calorie, no energy. That means this is the drink which gives us no energy. It is acidic. And one more thing is, if you take the acid which is used for cleaning the toilets, its pH is also nearly 3. <laughs> then what will be the difference between what is the difference between the cold drink and the toilet cleaners? Therefore, here students. What I would like to convey you is this. There is no point in drinking the cold drink. I do not know what for they will drink cold drink. Instead of that, you go for tender water, coconut water. That's the best drink. Or you can go for chanch, majigi. The best drink. Therefore, whenever in future, you, you, if you hold the cold drink bottle in your hand, you feel that it is toilet cleaner. And mind you, really, the cold drink will clean the toilet better than acid. Try it once. <coughs> so, don't go for drinking the cold drink. This one is. Uh, you uh, refer to the table, not from answering the table, but by creating the questions out of the particular table. Okay? Now, after this, the chapter will become really more interesting. This is the beginning part of the topic. After this discussion, the topic will become very much interesting because it involves calculation assembly. See students. Quantity of solute in solvent. This is very much important. Quantity of solute in solvent. This should be known. This is not very much important. How much quantity is dissolved in solvent? So for that, quantity of solvent is fixed in always for either for one liter or for one kg. Remember this. In the solution, 
1 liter of solvent is fixed either to 1 liter or for 1 kg whereas quantity of solute is varied based on this we will have so many ways of expressing the strength of the solution well this is called as strength of solution uh, strength of a solution here literally this strength stands for this quantity of solute present per liter or per kg of solvent. Okay, this different ways of expressing the strength of a solution. We have different ways of expressing the strength of the solution. This one, we have one as uh, first one as mass percentage. It's also regarded as made by weight. Second one, volume percentage. It's known as volume by weight. Third one is known as mass by volume percentage. That is mass by volume percentage. Fourth one is parts per million and it is abbreviated as PPM. Then fifth one is mole fraction sixth one is molarity and seventh one is molarity mole fraction is represented by x molarity is represented by capital M molarity is expressed by small one okay. how many ways are there to express the strength of solutions there are seven mass percentage is also known as weight by weight volume percentage that is volume by weight mass by volume percentage that is mass by volume percentage then parts per million that is ppm then mole fraction molarity and molarity don't get confused here the difference between these is just ri and li but it has got great differences okay there are seven ways of expressing the strength of the solutions mentioned for our syllabus for two seconds here in addition to this we have normality This is followed by capital M, which deals with equivalent weight. Then we have formality. It is represented by M. But these are these two are not in our syllabus. Next one. So let uh, we'll restrict our discussion to only these seven. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Now it appears almost one hour. We will stop now. Before concluding, uh, in this class, we tried to understand how to read the question. What should be the way of reading the inside the textbook? From creating the question point of view, the textbook should be read. Okay. After this, we have uh, come across the meaning of solution, then uh, meaning of solute and solvent. Then, how many types of solutions are possible? Then, uh, collide the difference between collide and the solution. How many solutions are there? Nine solutions are possible. And uh, how many collides are possible? Eight collides are possible. Which collide is not possible? Mixture of gas and gas. That collide is not possible. Why it is not possible? It will form homogeneous system. But for a system to be a collide, it should be heterogeneous. Is it clear, students? All we have seen. And we have come up to Yes, expressing this strength of the solution. Is that clear? How many ways are there to express the strength of the solution? There are seven. Okay.
I would like to give you one question for your thinking capacity. See, students. Uh, before defi defining this meaning of solute and solvent, what we have done is we have taken solute in small quantity, and solvent in large quantity. Okay, students. Now, what we do is we take both in same quantity. Upon mixing same quantity of the substances, which one can be regarded as solute and which one can be regarded as solvent? Try to answer this question. Till next video. We will answer this question in the next video or before that, if you try to answer it, just try to answer it and WhatsApp will be answered. Question is this, <coughs> if equal quantities of solute and solvents are taken, no, two substances are taken, if equal quantities are two substances are taken, upon mixing these two, it will form a solution, assume it will form a solution, then which is solute and which is solvent, two equal quantities are taken. Earlier. We have taken small quantity of solute and large quantity of solvent or the substance which is present in large quantity is solvent and the substance which is present in small quantity is solute. But now what we are doing, we have taken both the quantities are same, that is equal quantities of two substances are taken upon mixing this, which one should be called as solvent and which one should be called as solute. Try to answer it, Actually, all the best. Thank you.